Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to the first day of the second week of Eldritch Moon Spoilers. Today we have 11 brand new cards to take a look at, including, as you can tell from the title screen there, the brand new Liliana, Liliana the Last Hope. So we got a lot to cover, so let's get started, and we'll begin with Deploy the Gatewatch. Two white, four generic. This one is a mythic sorcery. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put up to two Planeswalker cards from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Now, what's kind of fun about this card is there's a little bit of a flavor flair throwback to Collected Company, but this time it's with Planeswalkers. That's kind of cool. And the fact that this thing only costs six, and casting two Planeswalkers is probably going to cost you more than six in most cases, that makes this card actually pretty interesting and potentially playable and standard. There is a Super Friends deck that's been doing very well in the meta and has done very well in the meta. I think this could complement a deck like that and you might be able to get some extra value and speed that deck along. It's actually a very interesting prospect. So I think this could see some standard play. Again, it's just going to depend on how fast the meta is going forward and where it goes from here, but very potentially could see play there. And this is going to be amazing in Commander. I don't think I need to say that. Or you're going to be playing a lot of bigger spells. You're going to be playing a lot of planes walkers and if you whiff there isn't as much of a drawback as in a more uh, faster format like standard for example so cool card like to see this in cubes as well with some planeswalkers i think that would be fun next we have providence two white and five it's a sorcery this one's a rare you may reveal this card from your opening hand if you do at the beginning of the first upkeep your life total becomes 26 your life total becomes 26. Uh, okay, a couple of things kind of baffle me about this card. First off, its name, Providence, is actually a very simple, very eloquent name. Typically, they like to save that kind of name for cards that they may reprint numerous times in the future that are very simple, elegant cards. And this isn't, I don't know, that to me, I guess. I could be wrong. But I just don't know where this card fits and who's it is for to be quite honest first off it's not something you want to play in commander or any format where you start off with more than 20 life right <laughs> because then it's actually hurting you more than helping you especially if you draw it early in the game you just want to be able to use it if you're losing the game yes it does put your life total back to 26 when you cast it although it is still pretty expensive you're taking the turn off to do it but it buys you maybe a few more turns to hopefully find an answer to whatever is uh, beating you down. <laughs> but it doesn't necessarily, on its own for that mana, change your situation. And if you're ahead, then it's just a dead card in your hand. It doesn't help you deal with anything that your opponent may have to turn the tide back in their favor. I don't know. I I'm just not really high on this card. I just It's kind of weird to me that it's a rare. The only thing I can think of is maybe a sideboard card in a situation where you're just being beat down in limited or something like that. But even still, it's just not very exciting. I don't think it's really going to change the outcome of the match in most situations. Next we have a card that was spoiled from a Japanese language spoiler. It's Selfless Soul. White and one. It's a spirit. Flying. It's a 2-1, and you can sacrifice it, and creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. This is actually a very good card for limited. You pay 2 for a 2-1 flyer, that's fantastic on its own. And the fact that you now have the threat on the board that if you can sacrifice this, all your creatures become indestructible till end of turn. It really makes your opponent have to think about their plays in the future and their combat in the future, and it just puts them at a disadvantage in a number of different ways. It works well with cards like Rattle Chains, for example, if you're lucky enough to get one of those in a draft as well, because then you can use this as more of a combat trick as opposed to just something that's sitting out on the battlefield that your opponent sees. So yeah, I think this is really good and limited. This could be good in standard at some point. I just don't think it's really going to get there as long as Languish is still in the format. Languish is just a little too overpowering, I think. However, once Languish moves out of the format, we'll probably get another Sweeper to replace it. But if that Sweeper is a more traditional one, then this becomes a much better card. Next we have Summary Dismissal. Two blue and two, it's an instant. Exile all other spells and counter all abilities. And this is a rare. Now I said this the last few 
videos, but it does feel like, at least the last couple sets, Wizards is starting to give us more and more pieces of a control deck. And control's been kind of quiet for a long time in the meta, but it feels like Wizards is trying to push it a little more. And I don't know if we'll quite get there with this set, but maybe by the next set it might become a thing in the meta. They do seem to be pushing the Is It Tempo deck, and maybe, maybe it can get there. I guess once we see the rest of the set spoil, we'll be able to make a better determination. Now, having said that, this card is very interesting. Let's just talk about limited first. For example, my opponent plays an Eldrazi. I can counter it, but I can also counter the ability that it gets when it's cast. That's interesting. Uh, this spell also kind of has this built-in stifle effect, which is interesting because it can deal with abilities. So you start thinking about what Stifle has done in Legacy. It can do anything from really nullify a fetch land to stop just any sort of ability that you're that might be on a creature or a land. It really opens up a lot of different interactions. And also, this is nice against, say, Storm. Maybe a great sideboard card to deal with Modern Storm, for example, because it can exile all the effects of Storm. So this card just does a whole lot of different things. I do think it could get there in Standard if that is a Tempo deck becomes a thing or a Control deck becomes a thing. I think this could be a modern sideboard card as well to deal with strategies like Storm. I don't know if it will necessarily get to like Legacy because there's just other options like Fluster Storm there, right, and Stifle. Uh, but I do think this card is going to see play in a lot of different places. And that includes Commander. I think this is also a very good cube card. Next we have Turn Aside, and this is actually a reprint from Scars of Meriden, and this costs a blue. It's an instant counter-target spell that targets a permanent you control. This one's a common. So again, it's just another piece to the whole control puzzle, which I find pretty interesting. Now, in Limited, this is actually a pretty decent card because it deals with pinpoint removal and allows you to protect your creatures. Maybe it's not something main deck, but at least as a sideboard card, you may want to bring it in when you know your opponent has that copy of Murder or something like that that you want to deal with. Also, this could see some standard play again if control becomes a thing. Uh, other than that, it's a fine card. It was fine in Scars, especially in Limited, and it's going to be fine here as well. Maybe even a little better in this environment now that we see some better removal showing up. All right, maybe the big card everyone's been waiting for. Liliana, the last hope, two black and one, Planeswalker Liliana, of course this is mythic, three loyalty, plus one, up to one target creature. Gets minus two, minus one until your next turn. Minus two, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And minus seven, you get an emblem with, at the beginning of your end step, Put X 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is 2 plus the number of zombies you control. Okay, first off, let me start by saying this. I know when this was revealed a few hours ago now, a lot of people were a little disappointed. They felt that they were expecting something really grand, really big, in the fact that there's been a lot of hype around this card. They've been talking about it for weeks, that they were going to premiere it today. Everyone was really waiting. Expectations were high, and she's being compared in some ways to Liliana the Veil, vale, because that was the Liliana of Innistrad last time around. So some players are expecting really something big here. And this isn't big and splashy, but I don't think it's a bad card. So hear me out on this. First off, her biggest weakness is she can't really defend herself very well on her own. And that's a big deal. That's a big weakness. She can take care of a one toughness creature, but aside from that, she can't really defend herself very well. That's a problem. However, one could argue that she's not really meant to be alive for really a long time in certain situations. It's really more about milling yourself, helping you get to delirium, getting advantage from cards in your graveyard, and then taking those creatures that end up in your graveyard, bringing them back to your hand and getting card advantage. And in that regard, she did really does shine because she only costs three. And if you can do that even a couple times while she's on the battlefield, you start to garner card advantage. And that's actually very good. Also her plus one, it seems a little underwhelming. However, we, I think we learned from Baby Jace that giving something minus two power actually can be kind of good and helps tempo you a little bit. So she does some good things. The ultimate, you're probably winning the game. It's a fantastic ultimate, and I love the flavor behind it. I think that's pretty awesome. So I do think she's a good card. As far as standard goes, we'll start there. There has to be a deck that really is looking for what she's trying to do. 
So we're looking for decks that are trying to populate the graveyard, maybe a deck with a strong delirium theme, a deck with a strong reanimation theme, or just plain zombie go crazy token deck. She might be decent there too because all the tokens will be able to protect her. That's the deck where this card wants to see play. If that deck gets there in the meta, then she'll see standard play. If those decks can't get there in the meta, then we may have to wait a little while, maybe wait till post rotation. Having said that though, I think at some point, probably sooner than later, she will see standard play. Only costing three is a big deal. She can get in there and get some work done. A lot of people were disappointed with Nyssa back when she was revealed too, and she definitely saw standard play, and because of her low casting cost, was able to do a lot of work. I think Liliana's kind of the same way. I think it's a more subtle design, but it can still be very, very good in the right situation. Now beyond that, yeah, this is still a great card for Commander. Imagine playing this in like Commander Zombie deck and just going off. That'd be like incredible, right? A uh, great cube card, so on and so forth. Don't really know if it's a card that's going to see modern play or anything like that. But nonetheless, I still think it's an interesting card and it will see play in a lot of different places. Next is Oath of Liliana, and this might actually be my favorite card of the day, which is a little strange considering we just saw Liliana, uh, but one black and two legendary enchantments. This one's a rare, and when this enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. At the beginning of each end step, if a planeswalker entered the battlefield under your control this turn, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield, and I also love the flavor text there. <laughs> and the art is actually pretty amazing, too. I love the clouds. Like, looks like the clouds are breaking apart and the moon's behind her. Actually, it looks pretty cool. So having said that, let's talk about the card. Here's what I love about this card. First off, playing it, making all your opponents sack a creature and you don't have to, that's pretty good. Uh, sometimes it'll be better than other times. If you're up against a control deck that's got one big creature coming at you, then it's awesome. If you're up against a token deck, eh, it's not as awesome, right? However, I love the second ability if you're playing with other Planeswalkers. You play the Planeswalker and you get a zombie token that automatically protects that Planeswalker. That's awesome. This card, coupled with the Liliana, the Last Hope, is actually a very good combo because where Liliana fails, where protecting herself is concerned, this card kind of picks up the slack for that, and that becomes quite good. So now any Planeswalker, even ones that maybe were considered weak in the past because they couldn't protect themselves, automatically get better, and even the ones that can protect themselves get even better because they can either protect themselves more or you don't have to waste the ability of maybe creating the token or bouncing the creature because you can just do something else because they have the protection. Very good card. I think this will see play in Super Friends style decks, perhaps even in Modern, uh, definitely in Standard. I think at some point it'll get there. Again, maybe not the current meta, but perhaps post-rotation when things change. I think we'll see her get there at some point. This is not bad in Limited because of the Sacrifice Creature effect, so I would still play it there. Obviously, it might not be great against all matchups, and you might end up boarding it out sometimes, but I think it's still good enough to run an even main deck in Limited. So, very good card. Like I said, it's probably my favorite for the day. Next, we have a card that was a German language spoiler, and loosely translated, United Resistance, 2 red and 1, Sorcery, Escalate 1. Target opponent discards all cards in his or her hand, then draws that many cards, and or United Resistance deals four damage to target creature, and or United Resistance deals three damage to target opponent. Okay, let's just look at the deal four damage to target creature for three. That's good enough to be standard playable on its own. <laughs> and I also think that makes it fantastic and limited on its own. Now you look at the Escalate and you look at the other abilities on here and this card actually gets pretty crazy pretty quick. The fact that sometimes I want to deal three damage to an opponent as well and hopefully get myself closer to that Alpha Strike when I'm playing an aggressive deck, that's phenomenal. I can get rid of a creature of course with a four damage. And then finally, if I'm drawing heavy on lands and I want to dump some of those lands out of my hand and get myself hopefully restocked up with some new creatures, that's fantastic with the first mode. So this card does so much. It gives you so much versatility. I really like this a lot. Like I said, easily standard playable, easily just first pickable, I think, in draft in a lot of cases. And I think it will see modern play, maybe even legacy play. It's that versatile. Watch out for this one. I like this card a lot. 
Okay, next we have Ishkana Graph Widow. This costs a green and four. This is a mythic, legendary creature spider, three, five with reach, and the delirium is when it enters the battlefield. If you have delirium, you get to put three, one, two green spider creature tokens with reach on the battlefield. And you can also pay a black and six. Target opponent loses one life for each spider you control. This is actually interesting. Now, Mark Rosewater showed this card off today in his article, and this was a card that I think people would have loved to have had in the old Innistrad block. If you ever drafted like the spider spawning deck, it's awesome. I used to love drafting that deck in old Innistrad. So I think a lot of folks are really clamoring, even all these years later, for a spider lord, basically, or a legendary spider at least. And this is that, and it's actually kind of cool. The fact that it only costs five for a three five of the reach, and you have the ability to perhaps get some more spider tokens, and to actually make your opponent lose life as well as a mana sink, it's actually pretty good. Now, having said that, where does this card fit? I don't see it in the current standard. However, this might be a little kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge. In the future, Thopters may be ruling the skies. <laughs> so this card might become a lot better at that point. So watch for this one post-rotation to become a better card. Uh, but aside from that, this is amazing in Commander, especially if you're playing with some other spiders. This can be a Commander in a Spider deck. That's kind of awesome on its own, like things like spider spawning, and there's so many like, just interesting spiders over the years that they made. There's some good ones in some of the core sets, for example, that you can probably make yourself a pretty interesting spider deck in Commander with this. Also a good cube card, I think. So I, that's where this one falls. I, I don't think it's going to do a whole lot in Standard right now, uh, barring the fact that this week we see a whole bunch of other spider cards spoiled, <laughs> but watch for it in the future. Next we have Spirit of the Hunt, two green and one. It's a wolf spirit, three three with flash. And when this enters the battlefield, each other creature you control that's a wolf or werewolf gets plus zero plus three until end of turn. The art on this is really incredible. I really like the art a lot. Uh, very good limited card. Unfortunately, I don't think wolves or werewolves are going to quite get there right now in standard. So it's probably stuck in limited, but it's a good limited card if you have a lot of wolves and werewolves. Great combat trick, and it's also a very economically priced creature. A 3-3 three, three for 3 is going to be very good for you in limited. And again, it seems like there's more and more pieces for a good commander wolf werewolf deck, so this will fit well there as well. And finally, our last card of the day is Nephalia Academy. This is an interesting one. Uncommon land, if a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard a card, you may reveal that card and put it on top of your library instead of putting it anywhere else. You can tap it for colorless mana. So a couple things you need to think about before you play this card. <laughs> First off, it is a May ability, so you don't have to do it, which is good. Secondly, it's a discard that your opponent controls. So your opponent has to force you to discard a card. You can't just discard a card to madness or something like that. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so having said that, the downside is if, let's say I get Thought Seized, for example, I now have the option to put the card on top of my library instead of putting it in the graveyard. That's good if I really, really, really need that card, but it's still a pretty big tempo play against me because I'm still gonna have to wait now to draw that card before I can use it, and it puts me back a draw, and maybe I really needed a land, and I was hoping to draw a land next turn. Now I know that's not gonna happen. So it's still a little awkward. It doesn't solve all your problems against those type of spells, but it's a nice option to have. Now the type of decks that really want something like this would probably be combo decks, right? Because they're trying to protect their combo at all costs. That's where this becomes maybe a little bit better. Is it good enough to see modern play in a combo style deck or in Legacy? I don't know, perhaps. This is a weird one to wrap my head around. This is a card you really want to play test with and just decide if its inclusion is good enough to warrant the space it's going to take up in your deck, right? Is it going to be good enough enough of the time? And I think you're really only going to figure that out with play testing. Uh, it could be something. Keep an eye on this one. It could see Legacy in Modern Play, or it might see nothing at all. <laughs> and as far as Limited goes, probably a good sideboard card if your opponent does have some sort of crazy discard thing going on that's causing you to discard quite a bit. You need to protect some of your bigger threats and your bombs, then maybe you just board it in. Uh, but I don't really see myself starting with this card in most cases. Having said that, those are the cards for today. So we'll be back tomorrow. We'll cover all the spoilers that will come out over the course of the next 24 hours. We'll do that the next few days. And then starting on Friday, we'll begin our full set review by looking at all of the white cards in the set. So until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day.
Hey, thanks as always for watching. This video, like all my videos, was made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Even a donation of a dollar helps me to keep growing this community and creating better quality videos for all of you. Check out our Patreon page for exclusive giveaways and future goals for the channel. If you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, product openings, or finance videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a good day.